Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another amazing episode of the Power of Women in Insurance podcast. We are talking all things hard market. We are in a hard market right now. It is a seasonal thing that we do see through the insurance industry every eight years, 10 years or so. Um, I came in in a hard market in the mold crisis here in Texas where lots of people were not writing insurance. But this is what we have right now. Uh, today is, let me look it up, April 27th, 2003. We are in a hard market nationwide. It is not just a one situation in Texas that's going to resolve itself pretty quickly. And we also have other areas of the country that are really struggling, and we're struggling before the hard market, just with markets and different types of conversations with agents and appointments and what we're all doing. So we have my good friend, Michelle Mosher, with me today with South Shore Insurance in Florida. So if we're talking hard market, we're talking hard market right now with Michelle because she is in the thick of it right now. So Michelle, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Teresa. It's great to be here. Well, I am up because I think this is the third time you've been on the podcast. Is that correct? I think it's the second. Second. Okay. I couldn't remember if last year was our first or second in my mind. So um, I know we talked about just kind of the Florida hard market last year. And of course, that was before, in my opinion, things got super tight across the country. Right. So today, um, I want to be able to talk about some of the things maybe that have changed for y'all over the course of the last year and how you are working to be able to keep your spirits up on yourself, your team, as well as your clients. Cause I think we're all just, I think all everybody's just getting so beat up right now. And I want us to bring real ideas and techniques to people to be able to kind of overcome this and survive, you know, we have tequila shots, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Liquor goes a long way at my house. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Um, you know, and you said it in your opening, it's Florida. I mean, right. it's like a whole sentence now, Florida. <laughs> it's funny because somebody had asked in, um, women of IAOA, I think earlier this week, or it might've even been in the big group, um, uh, about looking for a particular company's AM best rating in Florida. And I was like, oh, we don't, it's Florida. We don't do that here. <laughs> Not even a thing. But that particular company stuff you're looking for, they're demo tech rated A, and hey, hopefully that works for your lender, um, because that's all we got. Like, yeah, that's it. Um, it's been it's been a yeah, it's been a year. Um, started really March last year. We ended up with six companies insolvent, and oh. uh, one right after another. Yeah. where we had, you know, less than 30 days on the, for the most part to, to move all those people to a, a different company and then hope that that wasn't the next one that was right. going. It went and solve it. Yeah. Yep. We did have, we did have a few people that we moved three times last year. It's like, oh my, oh my gosh, I'm, like, I'm so sorry. Because whenever they go and solve it, they literally have like 30, 45 days for you to move everything out of their company, right? Everything. Yeah. So oh. the policyholder gets a notice and we're all hands on deck to requote, rewrite, um, reinspect if need be, because I, I don't know about the rest of the country, but we have, well, we have hurricanes here, as yeah. you know, um, but we've got requirement inspections and we've got discount inspections. When mitigation is a thing here, how the roof is attached to the home structurally gives them credits on their homeowner's policy wow. to, um, for, for wind on the wind okay. part of their policy. Um, and then we've got the, you know, four point underwriting inspections that talk about roof age and electrical and all that crap. So it's, um, you know, sometimes they have to rush to get those inspections and heaven forbid there's an issue. Yeah. You know, so citizens is our state funded carrier. They have these stipulations in place, always supposed to be the carrier of last resort. Mm -hmm. They are currently the go-to carrier. Um, I, for, I, my office has been open nine years and I had them for two. Then I stopped paying the appointment fee. I had two policies there. I was like, this is dumb. I'm, right. I'm paying them every year to not write their business and to keep these two like mobile home renters policies. <laughs> so I transferred them off to another agent and said, we're done with you. And about three years ago, I was like, how come those people left and they went to citizens? Like what's going on? Just got my appointment back. I probably wrote 120 policies there last year. Wow. 
they're the go-to company and you have to qualify for them. Like you can't have another offer within 20% of their price, uh, but they're not. Right. They're, I mean, I'm seeing rates go from, I had one, we'll keep chatting, but I'm going to pull it up. It was, um, was with Olympus, good company, but you can tell when they're done with a, with a policy and they just don't want it anymore. But they went from $7,600 in 2022 to $17,683. Oh my goodness. She's still there. She can't go anywhere else because she needs a new roof. $17,000 a year for homeowner's insurance? Yeah. When I first wrote her in 2015, that same policy was $2,246. How crazy. do people live like that, though? I mean, you know, we talk, everybody jokes right now about the price of eggs, right? If you got chickens in your backyard, it's like you're the new millionaire, right? Everybody talks about these things. You know, I mean, people are complaining all over the place that everything's going up, right? Everything. I mean, I bought new tires a couple of months, like two months ago. They were higher than I've ever paid for tires. You know, yeah. I mean... You go out to eat. I mean, everything's gone up a dollar, two dollars, even on, you know, even on fast food. I mean, everything's gone up, right? Gas is uh, in Texas. Gas is right at four dollars a, a gallon, which is one of the higher that we've really seen over the course of the last 20, 30 years. It's not the highest. Don't get me wrong, but it's definitely a month. We've got we kind of we think that's cheap now. We're kind of at that point. But, you know, <laughs> I'm going to go get gas there because it's only four dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, I can sit back and be old and say, I remember when it was 82 cents a gallon. But, you know, um, you know, but, but what we are really seeing is that a lot of people, especially people of retired age and or quote unquote fixed income are really struggling right now because everything's going up. Rent is going up. Car expenses yeah. are going up. And our insurance is going up. And we've seen it, obviously, not only homeowners, but also auto. Because okay. with auto, our, our car values have gone up. Used cars are more expensive than they've ever been. Backup bumpers have so much technology, even your side mirrors, not to mention your front bumper with all the sensors. And then we get into it, $17,000 homeowner's insurance. From 7,600. How are people? 7, the year before. How are people surviving out there? I mean, they call me almost crying. And I'm in Texas. And I mean, we're just, we are getting large increases. I mean, ours are coming in anywhere from 22 to 38% on average. That's the average window that we have right now. But I love 22%. You guys are you so much bigger than that. <laughs> I'm sure they're calling you just crying. Like they can't. I mean, how does somebody pay $17,000 a year in homeowner's insurance? I, I mean, it's over $1,000 a month on their mortgage. And she's, but the flip side of it is we got better options. Not, not a ton of them, but we have better options if she get a roof replaced. And they're just not in a position to do that because of everything else. There's, wow. I, I mean, I, knew, I, I don't have a good answer for, for what are they going to do. I mean, we just wrote a condo in Miami this week. And it was 3,900 bucks. Wow. For a condo? There's no, there's no coverage. It's crappy coverage. Like it's, it's just not crappy, but it's, it's with the state. See, and here in Texas, and so, okay, maybe, so I want to have a conversation that may take this totally off the rails. So I did this whole intro now. Sometimes I don't do that because I like a podcast to go wherever it's going to go, you know, and everything sure. rather than walking in with like a, a pre-planned conversation. Right. So now I'm going to take it off the rails just for a second. We'll come back to this hard market. Well, this is part of the hard market conversation, but it's also roofers and litigation. That's what got us to this market. Yeah, Ooh. exactly. So back when I first started 20 years ago, and I mentioned this in the intro or in, in the other portion, we were in a deep mold crisis in Texas, right? Mold claims were like $100,000 to be able to dig in the walls. And every time that they went somewhere, they found mold on the other wall. And so therefore, then they had to tear that down. And then all of a sudden, they were redoing full kitchens and bathrooms. And people were getting fifty dollars to $100,000 claims all over Texas. So the problem is now what they've done is they've excluded mold or they'll give you like $5,000 for mold, Okay. Another situation very similar to that is back in the 90s, before I even entered my business, because I started my business in 2003, 
back in the 90s, I remember I had a friend of mine who had a house down the street from me and she had her foundation repaired, which in Texas we have loose soil. We have we have low soil. So our foundations shift. And so therefore we got to put piers underneath our foundations. Right. Back then, foundation repair was part of your insurance. So they paid for it. And it was a $30,000 claim back in 1995. Let's go with 1995, 1998. Because our, our, our kids were school friends, like elementary school friends. That's why I'm thinking it probably late in the late 90s. Because my son was born in 91. So my question to you is, do you think that roofs and roof repair will end up being excluded at some point? Because it's the only way to be able to control insurance costs. So what we're seeing here is not necessarily an exclusion, but no, not replacement costs everywhere. Right. So we're getting a, a roof schedule, yeah. um, a depreciation schedule. And, you know, we talk to people about that and clients seem to understand it, right? If you have a, a 2012 Toyota Camry, Teresa, and it's totaled in an accident, yeah. nobody's buying you a 2023 Toyota Camry. Yeah, full, full, fully paid for. Correct. Right. But Correct. But if you have a 2012 roof and it's destroyed, we're giving you a 2023 roof. Right. Fully paid for minus your deductible. Fully paid for. Uh, unless you're a hurricane deductible or your AOP deductible, depending on the situation where you are. Right. So when we talk to clients about that, when they call and they say, well, what is this roof schedule thing? Like, I don't have full coverage on my roof. Well, you know, yeah, full cover hmm. we, don't, we don't like that term in this industry anyway. You don't have full yeah. coverage on anything. But let's talk about that. And when we re relate it back to their auto insurance, they tend to get it. Yeah. So I don't know why we're not doing that for everything. But we are starting to see not so much an exclusion, although we've got some companies that, that would offer that. Um, but we're seeing more of this depreciated thing. And the schedule looks like, you know, the first five years you're at 100%. And then you go to 95 and then 90 and then, you know, just continues to dwindle from there. It never goes below 25%. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't see that as a horrible thing. Um, I, I hope that that continues to help. We've got some crazy legislation out there that's, that's trying to, you know, we've gotten rid of AOBs. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a plus. But it's funny, there is, DeSantis called a special session in December and they made these changes, no AOBs and you can't cancel for roof age and blah, blah, blah. And the next day people were like, so is my rate better now? Like, that's not how it works. <laughs> They're not even finished with the paperwork yet. Yeah. Um, and that was post storm. Like these, so the rates that we're seeing still aren't hurricane rates. From yeah. Ian and Nicole, which was bad. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things, and, and I think I think it's kind of twofold and threefold. Like citizens is is that last resort carrier, and they don't necessarily want the business, but damn, they're getting more than they know what to do with. Yep. So now put in, oh, that was loud. Sorry. They put into play this form, this special legislation. Our state has decided that at some point, and it's a roll in or phase in kind of deal, if you go to citizens to get a policy, you're going to be mandated to have flood insurance coverage. Really? Whether mandated. you have a mortgage or not, whether you want coverage or not, if you're going to have a citizen's policy by January 1st of 2027, every citizen's policy holder has to have flood coverage, not even just on the dwelling. But if you have personal property coverage on your homeowner's policy, you're going to be required to have personal property coverage on your flood. Wow. Yeah. And it is a, let me see what it is. Florida law requires flood coverage as follows. And then it's got the little descriptor. So it's started April 1st for anything in an AE flood zone. And it, continues on all the way even through scan or even through preferred risk really based on coverage a value wow wow so and is that going to be through citizens or people out of there yeah is that through citizens or through um and like if I do your private market oh wow okay i don't know if you guys did we can do we do a lot of private market flood here we have a good amount of it. We try to do NFIP as much as possible, but we do we do private market through right flood. So we do that, but um, we don't do a ton of it because it's not usually cheaper. It's almost the same price, almost, almost right. not quite. It, it kind of depends on the area. So same. You know. and we'll look at it to determine like, you know, if, 
if you're in an X zone, can we get you better coverage private market? Yeah. Versus the NFIP max. Cause right. it just doesn't get, the NFIP max just isn't enough coverage for the majority of our policyholders. I mean, right. we're not seeing $50,000 values on construction anymore. I right. Mean, right. Uh, but it's, I mean, from a carrier standpoint, man, they're tight. They don't want it. They just don't want it. I've got one company that won't take a policy if the home is more than a year old, a, a um, year. One, one. The home or the, like the home or the roof, the home. Wow. I've got some that close at 2008. So 15 years. Um, they just don't want the business because right. they don't want to have to get into an issue where they can't cancel because of roof age. So they just won't write it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know about you guys, but we have a big issue here too. Talk about hard market um, with solar panels. We're starting to see a lot of problems with solar panels. Like solar who owns companies. it? Who's supposed to do this? The insurance carriers are starting to like say, hey, if you're leasing it or whatever, we're not going to touch it. You need to call your company to come do this. And or they're not covering certain things. I mean, it's getting, it's get, it's starting to get there. I've only seen uh, two claims where that's been a problem. I haven't seen claims issues so far, but eligibility wise, I, most of our companies. Oh, are eligibility. Good. Okay. Yeah. It's the first thing we tell people like, don't buy that new house. The first person to knock on your door when you buy a new house is the solar sales guy. Yeah. And it sounds great. But now we can't insure it, or you've got to move, or, you know, whatever. It's like, please tell us. I, I've got disclosure forms out the yin yang. Like, nope, I don't have solar panels. Or I have solar panels, but we're not net metering or selling power back to the insurance company because some of our carriers won't do that. Or I have solar, but it's just to heat my pool. And so those are typically okay with most of our companies. But some, not at all. Solar, no. The end. Not eligible. They wow. might as well have a pit bull, a German shepherd, and solar panels. <laughs> They're and just, a 28-year-old group. Why not? <laughs> really? Yeah, right? Just add it all in, right? Ah, it's oh, just, my gosh. It, well, and, and you had said, you know, what are we doing? It makes for a long day. Right? Yeah. I mean, at some point, we just, sometimes we just take a break and have a stupid dance party. Mm. Sometimes, sometimes we take a break and I go to the grocery store and I buy us some cider for Friday afternoons and we're like, yay, we got through the week. Yeah. Um, and sometimes we just hang the phone up and, and say things we probably shouldn't say. Um, like, ah, you know? yeah. Um, yeah. But we come back the next day and we do it again and we do it with a smile on our face and we try to educate our consumers to make sure that they at least understand. Yeah. Um, I think one of the biggest things we do here is educate. I don't care if I write the policy or not. I mean, at the end of the day, I care if I write the policy, but I would rather somebody understand what they're doing and why it is how it is and what their voice can do to change it. Yeah. And it's funny because I, I do a lot of things in our community and I have a lot of connections with our local officials and things like that. And I argue with these guys, like what is happening? You can't go from 5,700 to $7,600 to $17,000 and not think that it's an issue. And one of the guys running for our county commission seat said to me, but it's not a big deal. I'm like, <laughs> You see, you see, my phone rings all day long with it being a big deal. And he said, I have two things of legislation on my desk. Nobody cares. Nobody calls. Nobody calls. Really? Uh -huh. I, and they're more concerned with so many other stupid things. Well, and I, and I, I do get that. Political. I do get that. If people aren't but, screaming about it, you know, I, I understand there's probably a lot of things that they get a lot of people that are. I mean, people call out. because they don't want them to build another Dollar Tree. <laughs> on the on the main street, but the but the fifteen seven hundred dollars a year roof, yeah. Rate increase. Um, but That's it's been you know now it's on our news all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a, a segment out there on one of the local news channels right now about this this couple out beachside that are losing their insurance because they net meter tier two for solar and it's not allowed at their company. And so, what are they supposed to do? Well. And that's, that's where we try to be upfront about that stuff first. Yeah. Like, let's talk about, do you have solar? No. Okay. Well, let's talk about if on the off chance you ever decided to, here's call us first. Yeah. At least if you get us in the loop, 
you're not on TV crying about what are you going to do now because of the decision you made. Yeah. Because we'll educate you about what to do to not be in that position. Yeah. It's so what type, how are you getting that message out? Because I think that we can send emails, we can have conversations on the phone, we can do all these things, but it still feels like, like what, what do you find that people listen to? I mean, people, people need all sorts of information and they need it multiple times, right? We don't just get it the first time we hear or we see something. We might see something on the news. We're going to go Google it, right? We're going to read a couple of articles about it. Maybe we're going to talk to our neighbor about it. Maybe we're going to call our insurance agent. Most people, but what, what sets people on that education line? Because a lot of people think insurance is free money. A lot of people think, oh, my insurance should just magically pay for it, right? It's not my fault that somebody sideswiped me on the highway and drove off. It's not my fault that hail falls from the sky. It's not my fault we have a hurricane. And right. how do we get beyond that conversation? Uh, but that's what insurance is for, to the conversation of, but this is what insurance is doing and how you can be most effective with what the market is doing and how to be able to work on that. How, how are you helping your team to get through that conversation with your clients? We do it at the quote process. Okay. So, I mean, we're really having a conversation with our potential clients, our prospects, while we're gathering information about trying to quote their house. You know, and you call and you want to quote on your new home, we're going to have a conversation that surrounds why we ask the questions we ask. Right. And not typically just for conversation. Yeah, I want to know about you and your kids and what do you do for work and whatever, but, you know, hey, I, does it have solar panels? Well, why would you ask me that? Nobody's ever asked me that before. Well, here's why, because it's an issue. And we want to make sure you understand that we're happy to educate you when you want to know about that stuff. It might not be today. Right. But we try to put ourselves out there, especially, especially in our community, because we are here and we put ourselves out there to be a resource. You know, we do, as you know, I mean, you've sent business this direction, lots of IAOA agents send business to us. I, I don't have a whole lot of people moving to like Iowa, but, <laughs> but Iowa agents have people moving to Florida. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we try to be a trusted resource for, for as many of those agents as we can to make sure that they understand that we're going to educate their clients. And so yeah. when people are coming here and a lot of our business comes here from somewhere, from another state. Yep. Yeah. And so that conversation is like, so welcome to Florida. We're a dumpster fire. Um, <laughs> you either love us or you hate us, but here's the deal with insurance. And it's yeah. not just the homeowner's insurance. Auto insurance here is a mess too. So let's talk about those things and let's talk about the expectations when you get here. And, and at the end of the day, if you're here in our little town and you don't know anybody and you see an ad on Facebook for the dude that puts up ceiling fans or light fixtures or whatever, Call us first. Yeah. I don't care if you need a, a place to get your hair cut, someplace to have happy hour, because I know that place. Um, <laughs> the dentist, a contractor, whoever it is, we've been here for 13 years. Mm -hmm. Use us so that we can tell you who we know and trust to be able to come do that stuff. And so we become sort of a trusted advisor to them in more than their insurance. I have this girl calls me, she's like, I need a haircut. Do you have that girl? Like, I, uh, and my mom cuts my hair, but yes, yes I do. <laughs> I'm sure like a whole bunch of them. Um, I need a location to have a baby shower and you know, do you know any place? Yes, I do. Cause I'm in the chamber and I'm in the women's club and we really try to be a community resource. And part of that community resource is educating people on all things insurance. Yeah. Um, I just got done, not just, but I have submitted, we try to, we have a, a, good relationship with our network of, of lenders and realtors. Uh, and I work with an inspection company to work with her network of realtors and educate them on things that would make them, my whole goal in this is to make that realtor a better referral source for their client, right? Yep. Like all about you. Nah, but it's all about <laughs> Yep. So one of my goals this year and that has been met and is just kind of hanging out here and just looking at it online, I submitted to the State Department of Real Estate a CE class for realtors. Okay. All on insurance. So it's an insurance, two-hour insurance class for realtors to get CE. They have to get CE anyway. They're sort of interested. They call here all the time. Why is this a big deal? Why, why am I being told that my buyer has to have flood insurance? even though they don't have a mortgage. 
because of the citizens policy out of bed mm -hmm. that's where it starts and so now now we've educated that agent so now she knows or he knows when they're talking to the next client that's buying a house on the water for cash that's going to go to citizens for their insurance they don't have a choice they have to buy a flood policy yeah and so let's let's build that up and get prepared for that let's, let's not make that a closing day surprise right um, so I put this class together that talks about those things and it's in process of being approved at the department now. So we'll start a, a statewide, um, either Zoom or in person, but that's kind of, that. you know, I, I've stepped a lot away from personal lines mm -hmm. um, over the last few months. I do a lot of commercial. I'm the only one that does commercial. I have a rock star agent that I hired in November. She's amazing. Um, and so she's really taken over all the personal lines. Is she, and, is she enjoying this? Like what was her, what was her experience before? Is she enjoying the insurance market right now? I mean, another agency. Um, and she, I, yeah, she enjoys it. I mean, it's, it's a struggle, right? Yeah. Right now she's trying to place a policy for a manufactured home, which is built in 1995 and it's only 1200 square feet. And the lender doesn't want to take the replacement cost value because the property is $350,000. Because it's private property on a lake, ah. it's but they're only going to get like 90 grand in ACV coverage for it. Right. And the lender's not happy with that. So every day we just hired a CSR and she's brand new to the industry and she comes from a server background and every day it's just like, okay, well, we can be really nice to people as we deliver them bad news. <laughs> <laughs> Service with a smile, right? We do it with a smile. We do it with a laugh. We make it lighthearted. I mean, they're not getting another option anywhere else. Yeah. Or they're, you know, a different option. You know, they may get a, a different personality, but we sort of keep it real. Um, but we struggle over it. You know, we hang up phone calls and we stand in the hallway and talk about, okay, well, what, what other options do we have? I mean, at the end of the day, here's what we have to offer. The lender's either going to take it or they're not. Yeah. But she's going to run into the same issue no matter what. It's not us. Right. It, you know, we got nine options for mobile home insurance. Nobody's given her what they want. And I think that's a really big point though. I think that especially agency owners, people in sales, people who are quote unquote trying to, grow their book of business, trying to, you know, expand their footprint, right? And right. and the account managers out there that are helping to be able to achieve that. I think sometimes whenever we hit against these walls so repetitively, we know it's not us. We know it's not us, but yet we take things so personally. We take things right. so internally that even though the carrier can't, or this is all we have, and we're seeing this in Texas, because honestly, we have not sold a state pool homeowner's insurance policy 18 years. I mean, since we kind of came out of that hard market 20 years ago when I started, right? Honestly, I, like you, I let my my appointment with Texas uh, Fair Plan lapse. But I had to go get it two weeks ago because we have a lady with a pit bull with an older home who, um, I mean, just the animal exclusion and, 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 and the valuation on her home, they just, nobody will take her. I mean, everybody has locked down every single rule that they've had that might've been one that they overlooked or one that they weren't super picky about or one that they didn't decline on, but maybe they sent you a letter and they wanted it fixed by next renewal or whatever for the condition of your home. All of that has stopped. And yep. all of it is... You know, and then our primary carriers have stopped just writing. Like we get probably about 30 to 40% decline on Safeco, no matter what we're doing. I mean, it doesn't matter what we're doing. It just automatically declines at 30 to 40% of everything we're trying to put over there, you know, and then other ones have gone ACV or 2% or what or whatever. I think we're seeing though, that the hard market is just something we're just going to have to deal with. You know, we we take so much pride in our relationship with our clients, but when we can't do more, we can't do more. You know right. what I mean? And I think we make it too personal sometimes. We do, because we like people. That's why we yeah. do what we do. At the end of the day, I'm a people person. Mm -hmm. I want to help all, most of the people. <laughs> we spent a lot of time last year learning who our client was. And, and we've gotten really good at, this it's just not a good fit yeah you know, it, it has to be a good fit on both sides sometimes it's not um and we we figure out ways to to not write that business if that's what we have to do yeah um but at the end of the day we want to help the people because we like people 
And yeah. we, you know, we listen to their sob stories and we listen to, to their heartaches and their issues and their $10,000 price increase. But at the end of the day, I can fix you, but you have to do something too. Right. You know, if she can't get a new roof so she can get a new roof, then when you do that, call me. But until then you have a mortgage. So you have to have insurance. You don't want forced place. Do we educate about why that's not a good choice? Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, she's like, well, I'm just going to have to tighten my belt and suck it up a little bit. And that's like three less Starbucks every day for, you know, one for each person in my household. It's a lot of money in Starbucks. Yeah. Um, and we'll have to do what we have to do until we can move it. Yeah. There's just not another option. And I told her, like, I, I get it. I could not have complained if she went somewhere else. From $7,000, $17,000. Like, I, I, I wanted to call State Farm for her. <laughs> yeah. But nobody else will take her either. Right. So we just, we, we laugh it off with her. She's like, well, what am I going to do? Just not eat. I'm like, well, I mean, that's a great buy plan. Well, I think too, we just like heard it in, in, yeah, like like we feel you, we're here, right? We have empathy for it, but I, but I can't fix it, right? Mm, I think that's so important. It's just like you said, have empathy because we don't want to come off as well, that is what it is, you know, because then the client is like super ticked off about it. So you have to have empathy, but at the same point, I think internally, we have to release when we can't do anymore. You know, we have to just say right now, you know, the market will change at some point. Something will happen either every all the, you know, something will happen. Hopefully at some point companies will come in all these break, break this pattern. Something will happen at some point. We can't be in this hard market forever. You know, I mean, something will have to happen at some point. So, I mean, we just, we just get through the day, however we can get through the day. And at the end of the day, all we can do is and we exhaust every effort. Yeah. And, and we hope that that's enough and we hope that they understand that and we try to educate along the way and we, we get a lot of business from that, you know, we got to call Michelle. I mean, at least she explained it. Yeah. And I think maybe that's a, you know, we get a, we get a lot of business from out of state, but we get a lot of business off of Facebook neighborhood groups. I've talked to IAOA about that. Um, And that is, and when I say neighborhood groups, that's the, you know, Riverview, Florida word of mouth page or the fish hawk, which is like a big neighborhood community here, word of mouth page or whatever it is, where somebody comes in and they got that renewal. And the first thing they do is go online and say, oh my God, what are you doing for insurance? Because this is crazy. And people drop our name in there. Yeah. And that's where I know when they call for Revhan um, that they got us on Facebook because when I get tagged, that's how it shows up. Yeah. Right. So we have a, a canned response that we put there and talk about who we are, what we do and give us a call. And at the end of the day, they may or may not have done anything different, but it's how you, it, but, but they know more. Yeah. And so maybe we're able to help them and maybe we AOR that business if they don't have a relationship with their agent or whatever. We always use that offer. We did an AOR yesterday and the guy came in here to have something notarized and he said, you know, I said, Hey, I understand we were able to, to transfer your business, even though we couldn't do anything better for you and your rate. And he said, you know why we did that? And I said, no, it wasn't me, it was Caitlin. And uh, he said, because she asked. Right? How many times are we quoting somebody that has a safe code policy or a traveler's policy or a progressive policy at the agent up the street and they just want a better rate and we don't have a better rate and that's what we tell them. Sorry, I don't have anything better. And you take it a step further. I said, hey, if you, I don't want to step on toes, but if you don't have a relationship there, yeah. I've been able to manage this for you. We've developed a relationship Cause like we joke around with them on the phone. Like we try to just take the mm, out of I'm yeah. shopping insurance and they come. Yeah. yeah. I've got the same exact situation right now with the nationwide and she got some bad advice from the nationwide, uh, whatever. And she couldn't get a hold of her agent. So she called nationwide corporate and they ended up telling her whatever. It wasn't bad advice. It just was not advice in her in her best interest, if that makes yeah. sense. So yeah. like they said, yeah, you can open up a claim for that. Well, it wasn't something that she could get covered because she didn't have enough. They, they didn't tell her to go find a roofer first just to open up a claim. She had another claim two years ago for water. So now she has two weather claims. Well, nobody it was, her on. yeah, because we had the big freeze out here two years ago 
And so now she has two weather claims. So she's almost uninsurable in the last five years. Two weather claims in the last five years, most of our carriers won't even look at her. And she's like, but that, but they told me I could open up a claim. I go, well, you can, but it might not have been the best interest. You know, you needed to make sure you did the due diligence to make sure it was going to at least get covered beforehand. But then you still can't change insurance carriers because most of our carriers won't take to, they're taking weather and putting it all together, freezing, hail, you know, uh, wind, all that now is considered weather before they were three separate types of claims and you just couldn't have two claims of the same type. But now they're saying all those are one type because they're weather. It just changes the game. I mean, especially after our, our ice freezes that we've had here in Texas, but they need advice. And so I told her, I said, we're happy to help you. You're not going to be able to move your homeowners right now with, with Nationwide, um, but we can take that over and at least give you better advice and help guide you through the process. So right. she signed everything last night and we're going to move it on over. So somebody to talk to. Yeah, We run into a lot too. Um, and I don't know if you guys are, but you know, somebody will call because of their rate, right? And okay. So the first thing, and, and we, we follow the, the Kelly Donahue deal with this, like we're not automatically requoting you. Let's talk yeah. about it. Like, let's talk about the coverage. Let's talk about the rate. Let's figure out is, is requoting the right thing or is tweaking this policy the right thing? So here's what we find when we do that, right? So we go in and we recalculate the replacement cost estimator. <coughs> so now they have a bigger issue, right? So they don't like their renewal rate, but we're finding a shortfall in their coverage. Yeah. And so at the end of that conversation, they're like, well, crap. This really isn't the direction I wanted to go, but because we've done such a good job at figuring out who our client is, yep. they understand it. And now we haven't moved to them. They wanted a better rate. They didn't get one. We increased their premium, but they have the right coverage. Right. And at the end of the day, when they put their head down on their pillow, they feel better about what they have because we've talked all the way through it and they don't like the result. But how do you go to bed at night knowing that your $300,000 house is going to cost $400,000 to build back and you don't want the insurance company to make that decision for you? Right. So would I build back what I have now? No. I, I, we're empty nesters. I don't I mean a five-bedroom house. Right. But I, but I bought one and I don't want the insurance company to tell me I can't have it because there's not enough money in my policy to do that. Yeah. So that's how we have that conversation. And that's, that's my story. Like, that's my deal. I, there's well, and we don't want our clients to be forced out of their home because they can't rebuild yeah. either. I mean, you know, what if they do have three kids and they have a five bedroom house, you know, and and they have, you know, a guest bedroom for grandma and grandpa whenever they come visit. But the reality is, is that, you know, we want to make sure that they don't have to go from the house that maybe they've made some good improvements on, that they've taken time to remodel, upgrade, and all of a sudden they're back to that builder's grade, very, very basic home because they have to get a hundred thousand dollars out of rebuilding that house. They might get the square footage, but maybe they won't get the quality out of the home that they had before or, you know, the other pieces of it. So there's so many different aspects of that, you know, um, as far as like being able to make sure you could rebuild and all. It's such an interesting conversation because the first thing they want to do is lower their premium. Yeah. What can we do with this? What can we do with this? I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's, let's really review it. And at the end of that conversation, it's like, well, okay, send me those documents to sign. <laughs> like, all right, well, you know, we will. Um, but you got to feel better about that. Yeah. Right? I feel better because you're protected properly. Um, not any, you know, exposure anymore for us. Um, yeah, we made a little bit more money on it. That, that's not our goal. At the end of the day, I want you to understand your coverage and what you have and what you don't, what you've decided to select. And, you know, we'll work through it. But we sent, I had a templated email that we send because one of our carriers, um, they were taking other carrier RCEs. So take an RCE from anybody. Okay. You have to upload it. But if it's not an RCE in their system, now they request a re, a, just to check it. So it's causing us to check them. Now we're checking them in their system so that we can get out of that cycle because it's been a little bit of a hiccup. Like, yeah. Man, these are a pain. But we're finding a lot of shortfalls. And so it's opening the door to conversations of, hey, I know you don't like your renewal price, but we need to talk about your coverage. Yeah. That particular company didn't have a huge increase. So that was kind of nice. It's been an easier conversation for most of those. Right. 
But anytime they call and they, you know, if, if, if it ends up as a requote, now we're requoting today's replacement cost value. And, you know, if you got solar panels or whatever the case might be. So it's just, it's a lot. It's not, it is not an easy job anymore. Right. I think it used to be easier, a lot easier. Um, when we brought on Chelsea last week, <laughs> they're like, this isn't easy. And she's like, I haven't a server at Cheesecake Factory for eight years. Like, I mean, <laughs> that's not easy either. Yeah. But this is like taxing yeah. on your brain. At the end of the day, I just want to go home and not talk to people. Yeah. And just chill. Like, yeah. talk to me. If there's not a dinner, I'm tired of making decisions. Yeah. Because I feel like I make decisions for people all day long. But what would you do if it was if it was you? So when I got home and Todd says, what are we having for dinner? I'm like, I have no idea. I don't care. <laughs> I, don't care. I don't care anymore. I don't like food anymore. There's that whole other thing too. So it's like, whatever. It's like, like whatever. Like, just whatever. Just don't make me decide. Even the where to go for dinner. Even the, you know, hey, do you want to, you know, even if it's like something about the weekend, right? Like, hey, do you want to get together with the kids and take everybody out for dinner at wherever? I don't care. I don't care. Right. Just, you know what I want? I want one weekend where somebody says to me, this is what we're doing. Yep. I'm coming to Dallas this weekend and I think that's going to happen. So. Oh, good. Good. See? And so they have the whole weekend planned out so I don't have to make any decisions. Not to do anything. You just go and do. I used to always say that back in the day when I went through a, a divorce years and years and years ago, I ended up waiting tables in the evening. So now it's just, you know, person out there waiting tables, doing my yeah. thing, whatever. I love the fact that if there was a problem, I could go talk to them. Right there. Not me. Not me. Okay. It's no longer about me. You go talk to them, whoever that is. Right. And I remember um, just going home at night and going, I'm not the center of the decision making processes. And it was just so nice. And sometimes I've even told my husband, I said, maybe I should just go get like a, you know, easy job at night just so I can know what it feels like to hand off that responsibility. Not that I want to, because I'm not going to go out and get another job, but sometimes you I'm don't like, have time because your brain is still full of decisions oh. when you get home. Completely, completely. I mean, I may work until six physically, but I'll even, you know, 10 o'clock when I'm going to bed, I'm thinking da, 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 in my head, you know, because you don't really, it's not, it's not really something easily to turn off. It never off. goes away. Mm -mm. It never goes away. I work it at night because we're, we're still in that small agency staffing thing, right? So there's me, we have a VE, um, we've got Chelsea, who's brand new, and we have Caitlin. So there's a total of four of us. I am still working in this agency. Yeah. So, and I, I anticipate I'll always be working in this agency because I really like what I do. Right. But I need a better divide of in and on. And I think that most people do. Yeah. I know there's some guys out there who are really, Billy Wagner, God bless him. I love me some Billy Wagner. He has got a system and he doesn't. Miles Merwin's another one. Like they're working on their agencies. I'm yeah. not that person. Um, so I do, you know, working at night on things like Canva to make a new graphic for something because we're going to start doing this or that or whatever. Or I'm emailing back my social media people because they're the last thing I need to think about in my email while I'm trying to close a commercial. Yeah. So it, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't begin to know where to have another job. <laughs> <laughs> I totally so, yeah, agree. I totally like, agree. Sometimes I just want my brain to do something else, to exercise a different way, you know, that I feel like I'm I'm always in this mode, even like Saturday and Sunday, it's like, I'll be sitting there and all of a sudden something just pops in my brain. I don't know where it comes from. And it's not like I was thinking about it two minutes ago or even trying, but it just automatically pops up in my brain on a Saturday afternoon at four o'clock or two o'clock. the shower. It's like, oh crap. Yep. Oh crap. <laughs> And totally. then do I remember it by the time I get out so I can make a voice note about it? Yeah. Well, back. before I go to bed, sometimes I'll send myself an email. Don't forget. But do, 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 do. And I'll just like write it out or voice text it or whatever. And it allows me to sleep at night. You know, I mean, it allows me to release a little bit so that tomorrow I won't forget. Otherwise, I have a really bad problem at 3 a.m. I'm up worrying about those things that I can't work on anyway because nobody's working and nobody's doing anything. I have gotten up and worked like at four o'clock in the morning, but I just, I've, I've gotten to where if I send myself an email, 
Don't forget about this stuff tomorrow. It helps me to make sure that I get done all the things that are bothering me or worrying me. Right. So that way I can release them and just relax. You know, that I and I start to take the CBD home. before I go to bed and it helps my brain to shut down because I need something. I, you know, I'm driving home and on the way home, it's like, oh crap, I never call that girl back. Like, and I know it was a team's message and I'll lose that by tomorrow. Yep. I'm like, Here's my note. Yep, yep. Complete. But a reminder, thanks. Thanks, Google. Well, um, Michelle, in this hard market, if people want to reach out to you, be able to connect with you about either the Florida market, hard market, some of your neighborhood stuff that you're doing with neighborhood groups online, all the awesomeness, because we do have some really great, uh, huge nuggets of information in here. Plus, people can go back to the one that we recorded last year, which is about the Florida market. And if people want to be able to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to connect with you? Probably email or Facebook, um, especially if we're talking about our, our online groups. I mean, you know, this goes everywhere, but our Facebook groups, I'm in all of those as often as I can be. Um, the office telephone number, can I, you want me to just throw that yeah, out? Here? Whatever you're comfortable with, yeah. Sure, 813-448-7580, or it's 8138 on Facebook, it's Michelle Mosier Rebhan. Um, and I'm, I'm an open book of information. If somebody, if I can help somebody with a struggle that they're having, or if they've got questions about our market, or if they've got a client out of state with questions about a Florida policy or whatever the case might be, we are happy to help. Um, the community stuff that I do, the neighborhood group stuff that I do, I'm happy to talk about that anytime. It's just super simple stuff. I mean, we have not reinvented the wheel. It's our clients do it for us and we don't pay for it. It's, just phenomenal. I love it. I love it. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day today to be able to talk to us. And as always, I always love talking to you. So thank you so much. Fun. All right. Well, everybody, this has been another amazing episode of the Power of Women in Insurance podcast. My name is Teresa Kitchens, your host. Do make sure that you look up uh, Michelle Mosher Rebun on Facebook. Make sure that you look up South Shore Insurance. Check her out. Look her up because she is doing amazing things in the industry. Check out also yeah. our episodes every single Wednesday as we do interview another amazing woman in the industry doing awesome, amazing things to be able to make our industry a better place. Everybody, thanks so much for listening and we'll talk to you next week.